Well, you link wealth creation to uh, the acquisition of skills and the employment of skills in a, in a disciplined way and also uh, in, a, uh, in a frugal way in, in terms of, of, of lifestyles. Yeah. But others would, would attribute uh, the generation of poverty, the obverse of wealth, to uh, colonialism, imperialism, exploitation, uh, yes. uh, economic exploitation. How, how do you handle handle those arguments? Well, insofar as those arguments are meant seriously, you can simply look at evidence. Uh, insofar as they're purely political arguments, they're saying what people want to hear. Obviously, there are people who would much rather hear that than to hear the other, because if you think that's the problem, then it's not, there's not only a, a quicker solution, uh, but there's a more, m more emotionally and morally satisfying solution, uh, namely you fight against the exploiters and so on. If you look at the third world, for example, those parts of the third world where the uh, imperialist powers have come in, have typically been the more advanced parts of it. They've been the most prosperous ones. Even if they weren't prosperous before they got there, they became the more prosperous parts. Those parts of the third world that the imperialists have never touched are, almost without exception, the very poorest places on this earth. So you don't find any, exploit, uh, any explanation for poverty and colonialism? Uh, the reverse, perhaps? Oh, absolutely. That when, when the Romans, for example, invaded uh, the British Isles, they conquered uh, the southern part of uh, Britain, but they never conquered Scotland. Uh, and for centuries thereafter, perhaps for a thousand years thereafter, Scotland was far behind England in economic and cultural development because England had the advantage of tying into the whole Roman civilization and everything that it had created, to some extent, percolated down through the British. Uh, that doesn't mean the British were happy with the Romans being there, you know, a thousand years later, Churchill could say, we owe London to Rome, but that's a thousand years later, and Churchill didn't have to go through what those people went through. So I'm not saying this is good for the people who were there, but in the, but in the longer run, of course, England became what it was because the Romans came. And Scotland re finally developed only after England conquered Scotland, and then the culture that developed in England then could spread into, into Scotland as well. Well, does this suggest then that in addressing poverty in today's world there ought to be a latter-day reincarnation of imperialism or colonialism in some form? No, uh, because I think politically it's impossible. Uh, they're, they're, I, I hear from the perverse parts of uh, some independent nations, they say that they, they, they were better off under colonialism and so on. That, is, that isn't in the cards. Uh, the, the people who are in the imperialist nations don't want to take on that. But some cost. would say that there is the functional equivalent of that in the operation of the multinational corporation today. Do you see that, uh, the operation of the multinational corporation, as help or hindrance to uh, the generation of wealth in developing countries? Well, in those countries, the multinational corporations uh, very often uh, not only pay more money than the local industry pays, but it brings in skills that don't exist and creates industries that, that, that never were there before. To that extent, I think they, they are a source of the transmission of international uh, human capital. Uh, to that extent, yes.